relies on. But then on the opposite side of that, the guard, this squad, they're looking to make a name for themselves here by taking out Navi. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the guard are one of those squads that are gonna be like, one of those like gatekeepers to get into like the top pro bracket in like top eight for, yeah. for I'm guessing for like months and years to come. These players have established themselves for a long time, but taking a quick look at the game types and map layout, we're gonna kick this one off though with strongholds on live fire. So that was gonna be real interesting seeing who's gonna control B a little bit better. Yeah, that's right. And then we'll have Slayer on recharge, followed by CTF on Aquarius. And if necessary, you saw the rest of the series there. I don't think I need to say it, but here we go, folks. First match of the day, the guard versus Navi. And I'm particularly excited, uh, Dave, because the guard, an all Latino roster. Uh, so it's actually pretty awesome uh, to see that right here on the main stage. And we're going to be kicking things off, though, with the one and only Kimbo. And an early, early day for all of these players, man. You know, it, this has been a marathon for them. You have to imagine everyone's feeling it on that main stage. Yeah, absolutely. But this is what these players are here for. They get excited to wake up here and go in towards Championship Sunday because you have you have this option of being up here early Sunday and playing, or there's some of these players that unfortunately have the option of sleeping in because they're going to be a spectator today. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But we're going to be having a full house later on today. That much I can guarantee you here. But first plays are going to be happening, and it seems like it's going well for Navi. But I believe the fight for uh, for Camo actually went to the guard here, and they were able to successfully acquire that. Now you're going to start looking to put, make these plays around B. Eli now trying to make some plays as well as he gets repulsed, but has to finish up this 1v1 battle. Sees exactly where he's going. Oh, this no. is the worst <laughs> feeling, man, when you're shooing someone 50 times the dang BR, and they don't die, finally. Yeah, he was not letting that one go. <laughs> <laughs> Eli was like, all right, I'm done chasing. I hope this person peeks back out, but it's just one of those times where it's like, as you're sprinting behind, when do you know when to stop your sprint and finish off that headshot? Uh, and it's just one of those things that, worst case, you're at least pinging that player and keeping their shields down. So great job by Eli. However, you want to see a little bit more out of the guard to fish off some of those kills. You don't want to have to be chasing down your own individual kills on a well-oiled team. Man, that Mangler, you see what happened right there? Player ends up getting the melee, right? And you think he has the advantage, but with the uh, with the fire rate of the Mangler plus the strength of the melee, wins out that battle, and it's still here, and, and managed to cap C, put a trip cap on Navi, all that because of one simple Mangler, one simple Mangler play. Yeah, play any of time. those little turnaround fights that you get on the Stronghold are the absolute game changer is what's going to either turn that in your team's favor or you're going to stop that bleeding and stop a trip cap but the guard already putting in some damage Strong and start. establishing a 60 point lead so this is going to be really tough here for navi to break this out but clearly guns blazing immediately for the guard you know david impressed me that you were able to do that math that fast at this time of the morning after the last well, three days we've the, had. The, <laughs> the better part about that is I was just rounding it out. So the fact that I can probably throw off any random number I, and, and Golden Boy's going to be like, dang, Dave, you're good at math. I'm like, yeah, you're, you're sure right I am. Bro, you already know the line. I'm going to say the New York public education system has failed me. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, now it's looking like Navi. They're going to try and bring this one back here, capturing B and C heat wave for two Foxy and a double kill to boot. So far, so good for Two Fox. He's got eight kills to his name, popping up behind here, looking for another one. That's going to be a second, and Two Foxy is certainly going to be on point here. I have loved everything I've seen from Two Foxy this event. He has definitely, like, turned everything around. Great by Two Foxy and crew, but I'm wondering why they're not just immediately going straight for that weapon. They had the numbers in towards top center, but now they're getting a little outnumbered. So uh, really interesting oh. kind of a uh, timid play there from Navi. I expected they cap C, they have numbers, just overwhelm over towards top center, <laughs> yeah. or make sure you have that A bridge, or sorry, the C Ooh, bridge good play. to watch towards the B stronghold. Yeah, and a good attempt at play here, and I, you know, totally right, right? There's like little moments that, you know, obviously it's like coulda, shoulda, you would have loved to have been able to do, but obviously it goes without saying that these players, right, in the heat of the moment, things are always going to get a little bit lost in translation there. The guard so far trying to hold on to this A stronghold as they push forward towards C, seeing that flip over. Two players, one below, one at the nest. 
That mangler is going to be hitting from distance there too here. Nice cleanup by Eli and the help from behind is going to allow them to be able to start this capture process on the B stronghold here located by Green Building. Yeah, and I was going to say the guard is happy to swap B for A if that's necessary. If you're going to choose which stronghold you want to get control of and then uh, push out away from, it's yeah. definitely the B stronghold. That one's the tougher one to get. However, the downside about the B stronghold is you're just in a bad position sometimes. Exactly. So the guard really needs to push out of there, and they do it without much effort as Bo Max gets that back, Jack for that double kill. Yeah, you know, I, you're so right about that. There's nothing pretty about going after that B stronghold because fighting out of that is a pain in the neck. That being said though, man, the guard are on fire and it feels like Na'Vi, they have a little bit of a, you know, they're, they're, I don't know, it feels like the guard are playing with something to prove here and they're bringing it to Na'Vi. Every opportunity they have, every opening that they have, they charge for it and they make sure that they make Na'Vi pay for it. Yeah, and they're also just keeping this pressure on for a Look at that. Cap again, here's a trip cap again. Full control. We're going to see what Eli decides to option for, whether that's going to be guarding B or run all the way towards A. And it looks like uh, he's going to option to guard B. They're getting all these kills, Walsh, and they constantly get the refresh. The guard are on fire here, but finally, two kills for Na'Vi, trying to turn this thing around because you're about to hit the 200-point threshold. And this is where it, it gets really dangerous. You have to play all, near perfect Halo in order for you to try and bring this one back with the score the way that it is. Yeah, it's still at least in a position position where they can make a couple mistakes and give up a double cap for a little bit, but you're right, Golden Boy, that there's really not much more room for error here for Na'Vi. They need to step it up. They need to step it up quick because this is not how you want to start off your Sunday. You're already in elimination bracket. Yep. If you lose game one, which is objective, you know how fast those Slayer games can go as well. So this could get out of hand really quick. So I love how Na'Vi are starting to bring this back and try to slow it down because even worst case, even if you lose this game, start to get your rhythm. It's okay if you start to get your rhythm and feel good going into game two and the rest of the series, but do not just get stomped this first game. Yeah, you know, it, it's deflating. Uh, and the battle for Camo was successful for Na'Vi. Maybe they could use this as well as the Mangler to turn things around here. We joked a few times about how weapons like the Mangler are semi-power weapons. Well, hopefully we could see it being put to good use here, but Kimbo's not going to be in a really rough spot. He has to push out. They know that Camo's going to be lingering about here, and here comes Kimbo. He's got the Mangler, looking to get the finish on the kill there. Has the help as well. Also has assistance too, and that was just so well executed. Two Foxy from the Nest side had Kimbo's back, and he was the bait. Yeah, and for the first time, we're actually seeing Na'Vi hold an extended control. They were holding that for the good last, you know, 30 yeah, yeah, to yeah. 90 seconds where they had at least two strongholds. They run around, getting the majority of the kills, um, and we're now seeing that finally reversed here in the favor of the guard. But that's what Navi need. They need one of those string together efforts and sprees in order to bring themselves back in this game. You know, 100 points, that's within reach in Strongholds. It, it is. really is. Especially with the way that Strongholds uh, operates now, right? You know, time stops when you're capturing the objective. Uh, you, you know, you points tick faster as well when you capture all three. This is a doable comeback for Na'Vi and the guard. They can't get too overzealous here. They're going to have to play the same way that they've been playing. Yeah, Na'Vi have been changing some things up and feels like they've woken up midway through this Stronghold's live fire game. So the guard need to continue to apply that pressure if they want to walk away with this dub. And they're so close. Yeah, they're doing such a fantastic job. And just a bare miss there from Kimbo for that two-shot melee. And those are those times we talk about Gold Boy where that kill right there is the difference between converting that stronghold and keeping control of it for Na'Vi or it going in the hands of the guard. Yeah, well, B looks like it's going to go to the guard here, but Jimbo awaiting someone at the garage door. That was going to be Boehm who ends up getting beamed by the Mangler. Now the play here for A, respectful, perched up on top. Yeah, uh, right by top mid. Big fight here between Brainstorm, and Brainstorm wins that one. Crazy battle. Now he's going to have to win this out of B. Yeah, and he is just fighting desperately for this. Jimbo doing all he can to try to take out this member of, uh, or obviously taking out Brainstorm over at B. But yeah. you can see how important this stronghold is. 
for both these squads. Because once you get control of it, you can watch that from so many different angles. Whether you go over towards Nest or towards Garage, there is no safe route to get over towards B. And so you need a lot of firepower to go that way. So that's why the guard is so desperately just hiding a couple of these spots and forcing Na'Vi to really match them in firepower over here. Well, this is going to be the guard's opportunity to end this one out here. Ten points remaining. A capture starting to begin over at B. Kimbo's playing some overguard duty, helping out a nest, but he's going to get wiped out there. Two Foxy now looking to get this trip cap. He's got Brainstorm in his sights. He knows exactly where he is. Also, assistance coming from mid as well. They're going to go and capture B here, but again, a great opportunity for them. But watch out, though. A and B have flipped to the guard. A lot of investment from Navi to get C, and now they're losing out on this. Only five points remaining here, and the guard will walk away with game one, but they managed to stop it right at the nick of time, but they have to stop this fight at C, but oh, no! no! And Fomex manages to win a big battle, and the guard walk away with game one. Yeah, that ending right there by Fomex really secured it. I mean, if they were able to flip there up for a second, but as I uh, unfortunately found out last night, a couple strongholds and control points can uh, shift away faster than you realize. Hey, man, who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? Uh, that said, though, man, what a great start for the guard. They, I came out of the gate feeling like, like, like a ball of fire, right? It was like nothing could stop them. They went up like 200 points. Na'Vi were down to 34 or 64 or something like that. So the fact that Na'Vi were able to bring it back was very impressive. Yeah, and I think the other part I didn't get a chance to highlight there was how many slays Bomex had. I saw at one point earlier he was like plus 12 with like a 19 and 7. I didn't see how yeah. he closed it out, but I did see how he closed out that B stronghold at the end. So Big I fight. know he at least added one or two more to close it out. Oh yeah, and he also made sure that Na'Vi felt it as well at the end. A little, uh, you know, tactical crowd share. Never hurts anyone. Uh, but, you know, we started things off in game number one. Obviously, it's an early morning for us here in Raleigh, North Carolina. But honestly, it feels like the guard are wide awake with the way that they started this matchup. Very, very strong. Going up 200 points, Walshy. And then we started to see Na'Vi make their comeback happen. And the guard, they needed to dig deep. They did just that. But they're going to have to do it for the rest of the series. Yeah. We're going to have to see them really step it up. And this is a situation we really see Europe in quite a bit, where they they put up such a strong fight. They have such uh, a great tournament showings. But yeah. then they really have to take out these these juggernaut teams or these, these strong, like, like I said, gatekeeper teams here in North America to really break into that top eight or top six. There's no easy feat. Just even beating one squad like the guard, there's like there's a couple squads. There's a few squads you have to go through here in North America to get a really, really top placing. Yeah, you know, it goes without saying the talent pool in this region has and always will be very strong, right? Halo uh, has, has had a very deep and, and, and rich history uh, in the North American region, East Coast. There was always the East Coast, West Coast, you know, especially back in the old Xbox Connect days. So it's like everyone's been playing and, and really like challenging each other to become even better, like better versions of themselves. So even like from one to 16, uh, in as far as our seeds go, our top teams, like all those teams are, are capable. And I feel like, especially because Infinite's a new game, all those teams are capable of like walking away with a win, right? It, any given Sunday, and what better Sunday than Championship Sunday? Crazy stuff, man. Uh, but hey, Navi, far from out of this one. As we go to Slayer Recharge, they're gonna look to bring this one back and. What are going to be some of the things you're looking out for, Walsh, for Na'Vi on recharge to try and bring, bring this thing back? Well, when, when I'm seeing these top teams play out recharge, this one is slowing down quite a bit more. Yeah. Where you see teams start to rotate and start to, you know, whether it's hold A or hold pipes and try to actually use that shock rifle or get the camo. So I expect this one to play a lot slower. Um, and then, you know, once they get that killer two, they'll start to charge in and try collapse in towards like A or pipe. So yeah. expect a... I would say different cadences of fights. Expect it to, you know, be a little fast at the beginning, slow down, and then once a kill or two happens, it's just gonna speed up again. So knowing when and how to increase that pace is going to be the factor for one of these teams to be successful. Yeah, it, it feels like uh, as well, and you know, 
speaking of team play styles, we really don't know much about the guard because this is the first time that we're seeing him on main stage, but we've seen plenty of Na'Vi over the open competitions. And uh, one thing that, you know, Na'Vi likes to do is they, they like to control the pace of the game on their own, right? They like to ensure that if they want the game to go slow, they're going to make the game go slower. If they uh, want to speed it up, they'll do just that. The guard have to recognize this, and they cannot let Na'Vi dictate how that pacing goes. Uh, or else they could find themselves in a situation where, you know, kind of similar to the, the E United quadrant game that I casted yesterday, where like E United just kept collapsing on them and pinned them down. But look at Jimbo here, the veteran. Ooh. And that's going to be a big trade, actually. Picks up a double kill out of that one. Still going to be, you know, within striking distance. But overall, you got to say, great play by the vet. Yeah, huge play by Jimbo there to have a literal 2v1 there at top A. Also having the height disadvantage to have to jump up from elevator and the weapon disadvantage because they had sword and to come out with trading a two for one you can't ask for more than that now we'll see what navi can do here as they continue to add on to this lead the game two swing is very much a real thing you know you lose that game one then you, you pick up the pieces on slayer Decent collapsing there. Uh, actually, respectful, going to be engaged in a 1v1. But never mind, actually. Brainstorm had help. And a player's going to be popping up behind here. Great play. Also, the other great play there from Jimbo was originally he had the intention to help his teammate all the way over at Pipes. Started putting some shots and realized his teammate died. He immediately stopped focusing over there. He says, I'm not going to lay damage across the map that cannot be finished up. And yeah. he focused nearby. And the fact that he Target switched that fast. He was able to find someone in control right next to him. Didn't get the kill, but was able to at least not die because of his attention being focused on the right places at the right times, Golden Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we speak of how the veteran players here in Jimbo, certainly one of them having competed on the world stage multiple times in competitive Ooh. Halo's history. He has been so awesome to watch. Uh, and, and man, this game in general has just been uh, a nail biter as the guard have managed to take the lead ever so slightly. It's going to be a two frank lead brainstorm with that 17th kill against Respectful. All four players of the guard are going to be located on the Hydro side, Whirlpool side of the map. Navi on the yellow portion of the map here. And that Mangler could do some, could, could, be, could be a problem. Oh, okay, you stop it and it's tracks. At the very least, you get a trade there. So you're happy if you're the guard in that situation. Uh, yeah, I'll take a Mangler trade. Like, if I, if the opponent has Mangler and I can go one for one with that player, I'm like, all right, I did my part. Someone will step it up here. Sometimes in those situations, especially with the lead, if you're able to get that trade, it, it's a massive win. And look at that. Respectful actually making the call that someone was Whirlpool Dan. That's one of the new features added, by the way, to Halo Infinite. You can tag similarly the way you can tag in, you know, Apex, for example. It's an awesome feature that while she wants all of you to use and a double kill for piles, but make sure you use your tagging and matchmaking if you see one. Or you can use your mic as well. I will take Who used either their option. Mic in you can use your mic, you can ping. You can do anything but stay silent when you're playing solo queue ranked with me. <laughs> uh, you know, if we're doing social stuff like that, go do whatever you want. I don't care, but we're playing ranked. I don't want to lose these Onyx oh. ranking points that I've been working so hard for. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Uh, make sure you do that if you see him in your games. Or you just completely ignore him. He didn't, he didn't him. grab it because oh. he had the repulsor. Yeah. Is that going to affect anything? Oh. He does end up getting a kill. He pops it. He it, pops it. It does. It affects everything. I mean, we yeah. got away with Camo earlier. Maybe would have changed that first engagement and not have to trade a melee. So, true, yeah. True, true, true. That changes getting away with the camo. Yeah, but this is where things start to get a little dicey here for Na'Vi, as the guard have managed to extend this lead by six kills. They'll continue onward here. Jimbo getting caught in the tower. Excellent help there. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, as a matter of fact, like it looked like Respectful was going in for the help. Fortunately, missed that one, but the help actually came from Eli on the Hydro side to ensure that they were able to pick up that kill, continue to extend this lead. And now it's, it's getting a little scary here for Na'Vi. Yeah, Eli doing a great job trying to get a bomb sire there with that sword. But as you said, this game is slipping away. You get a 10 kill lead, especially when they're at the mid 30s. Yeah, uh, it's it's really, really difficult to get there unless you have some sort of massive swing. And I don't really see 
not be having those pieces in place to do that. You would like to have some sort of camo. You'd like to have some sort of map control. But instead, all of Navi's members are all stuck over at Elevator and A. This when you're confined to one times. small area, you're just going to see the guard collapse in and get these kills. They're not only going to get these trades, they're going to come out ahead in these exchanges. This is exactly the situation that I did not want to see Navi in. If they go too slow, then the guard will recognize that, fly at them, and then sock him in the face a few times. And that is the reason why the score is 41 to 29. The guard are running away with this one, and it's mostly because they're focusing on aggression when Navi is focusing on trying to just, you know, and I think I don't think it's like the wrong way to operate, but at some point, you got to change things up if you notice that the uh, other team is playing a completely different play style. Yeah, I mean, this one's just seemingly too little too late. Um, at this point, if you're Navi, you... They have to have reality set in a little bit and realize that you're going to be down 0-2 in this series. Your tournament life on the line before you potentially fly home. Yeah. And you really have to step up here on Aquarius CTF. Yeah, Luckily, Aquarius CTF is like a longer drawn out game that exactly. you can start to get your rhythm. But same time too, at what point do you need to find your rhythm? You're down 0-2 in the series. You need to come into this game and this match hot on Sunday. It's, it's one of the, the most difficult positions to be in as you go in on a Sunday in the elimination bracket, realize you don't really have much room for error. Well, two frags remaining here. Kimbo trying to keep the drive alive, but a trade is only going to benefit the guard. One more. It's Boehm. He's going to be able to do it. And Boehm, for the final kill, is going to put the guard over on Navi 2-0. And what a tonal shift in that game. It started off slowly as Navi were trying to dictate the pace and the guard said, uh-uh, I'm going to push and punch you in the face. They did just that. Yeah, they are just looking so strong. The guard here really making a statement. Uh, I mean, if they, they start off this, this elimination back in round three by going with a 3-0 yeah. and then going these next rounds, I mean, that's the sort of fire you want to catch when you are in the elimination bracket. When your backs are against the wall, it's like, all right, yeah, we're feeling good, we're playing good. You want to go with that confidence and that heat as you go round by round. You just want to continue to pick up that pace. But yeah. as we talked about right here, yeah. we got Query CTF coming up next, Chibi. Look at this scoreline, though, man. This, this doesn't feel like the Na'Vi that nearly beat phase you no. know like this doesn't feel like the Navi that we know or wh what they're capable of we know that they're one of the top teams in Europe but the guard are playing like a squad with a chip on their shoulder as we went into the action here and always love seeing the controller shots by the way also they have the little had, stick extenders yeah, yeah, yeah like, the old, uh, give you a little freeze. bit more uh, uh, range of motion a little bit more control as you have like I said like that larger range of motion up did yeah you in, in school did you learn about like radius and what that is and stuff <laughs> you know no, I want to say I did. What is the radius GB? I probably didn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the worst. Uh, man, what a game for the guard. Navi need to wake up. We know what they're capable of. We've seen them do that on that very stage uh, at this very tournament. So we know that they have that ability. That being said, we're going to a Curious CTF now. You know, this is uh, what you, you had mentioned it before, Walsh. This is one of those game modes that, you know, it can, re it can really go the distance. I mean, lots of sight lines, you know, uh, but also at the same time, opportunities for flanking. It's a different type of uh, a, a map. You know, a lot of people compare it to midship. And yeah, sure, it has those uh, qualities of it, right? Arena map, you know, the call outs. A lot of people are using the same ones, but it flows in a, com it flows in a different manner. Not completely differently, but it, it flows weirdly if, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you're trying to make it any sort of, like, midships comparisons, like, on midship, you do have a lot more ways that you could, like, slip by and get all the way to, like, the bomb base or flag. Yeah. Here, you don't have those same sort of options. Yes, there are different spots you can, like, weasel around in the bottom center of the map and, like, you know, have, have impact down low. But you still have to do quite a bit of trekking to get all the way into the enemy base. You have a couple yeah. different stairwells you have to go up on either left or right side. Like, there's really no great ways to sneak around there unless you're leaving your team uh, a person down for an extended period of time. Yeah, so there are just not a lot of uh, op viable options if you're not careful, right? And uh, Na'Vi are certainly going to be careful. Uh, without a doubt. By the way, uh, just for some updates on some of the side stations, uh, Sentinels are playing against Unsigned Talent. They're up 1-0. Status Quo just beat Team War. And we have G2 up over BBG 1-0. But our eyes are focused on map 
three here. Capture the flag on Aquarius as the guard, if you're just joining us, are up two to zero against Na'Vi, who need to find a sign of life here in this match. Or this could very well be them going home. Yeah, they're going to have to pick it up right away. And uh, Luckily, like I said, this one, this map in game type is not just going to swing out of control really fast. You know, you have plenty of options to get kills, to slow them down, to get the slaves. Like we see Jimbo getting this double kill right here. There's going to be a lot of back and forth here and a lot of options for that. So that's a good thing, ideally for Navi, for like them to get like the quote unquote, like their groove or get their to gel together a bit more. But, um, you know, as we've seen these other games extended through and played through, um, clearly it's been the guard just winning all those exchanges. And what a nice perfect four there from Jimbo as he patiently pings that player, waits for that person to slightly overstep and overextend the top pink, and just takes those four shots. Oh, Jimbo's trying to get behind enemy lines here. Maybe he's gonna go for a back whack, or he's just gonna let this thing go. Ooh. And, oh, man. So he gets a lot of information there, and you're probably wondering, why didn't he go for the flag? You know, he was surrounded by the enemy team. The guard had properly defended that. They got two critical kills that stopped that flag run from happening. It wasn't much Jimbo could do there. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple options Jimbo had there. The one, like you said, and most people would just do this one without thinking too much is, Go back smack that person on the flag, get a flag touch, and then you basically go one for one with that player and you keep that flag alive. Second option, which Jimbo was going for, is saying, all right, well, I don't really have as much support. I'm going to see if I can get a second kill a little bit further on this flag. Yeah. And then just turn this into a new flag run, new flag capture. He was putting himself in a position to go up those stairs and get a new flag. Run. So um, it was a little unfortunate that Brainstorm kind of sniffed him out and found where he was at. Yeah. Because that, that player that was over, um, yeah, from the guard was just already looking for him. So for that player to, to go one for one with the camel player was just a, a huge play there from, from the guard. But that pressure that Jimbo was able to provide allowed them to be in the position that you're seeing right here inside of Blue Util. Uh, the flag now starting to make this run happen. Because he was present there for that last play, you know, Halo is just, a, it's like a butterfly effect in this game. One action can lead to so many things happening. Uh, that that you know could could really just change the entirety of the game itself And one has to wonder how the guard are gonna try and get back into this one because to foxy He has his flag clear across the other side of the map It's in his base and I think this is gonna be a flag cap here for Navi some signs of life here from the European squad and Navi go up 1-0 Well, it's not gonna be too surprising that we see this lane Actually going in the favor of Navi for once at that point of that flag pull and when they had all, all the way back to their base Navi had 15 kills on the board compared to the guards only 10 50% more slain piles had zero kills on the board as of yet You can't yeah. really expect much if your teams, you know, you're you're three minutes into a game or two and a half minutes in the game And where your teammates doesn't have a kill yet like generally that is uh, either the best wingman I've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> or that player is uh, still just having some rough moments to start off the match. So, um, uh, yeah, no You're surprise really there that Navi was able to, like I said, cap that while they had uh, five more slings. Dude, you, and it, honestly, you're really looking for Pals to be the player that steps up here because he was so instrumental uh, on recharge. Multiple uh, multi-kills for him, right? I felt like every time we went to a screen, we are constantly seeing him get some doubles. So this is where Pals is going to need to really dig deep here uh, and also rely on his team. But for Navi, this everything is working out right now. One thing that I really like there from those names from Two Foxy is yes, one banking off the back wall seems most obvious in some cases where you have to where you have to uh, date somebody out of a certain position at a pillar. Ooh. However, anytime you are able to throw a grenade past someone's peripheral as by banking off a wall behind them, it it really does throw off your perception of how to react to that grenade because it's anytime there's a uh, a nade bank banking off a different angle or like I said from behind, um, you really can't perceive it as well compared to like a nade coming directly in front of you. So That's very true. I really liked uh, that play from Tufox. Like I said, it was um, uh, one, probably the only option of how to do that, uh, unless they were trying to bank it like right in front of them. So yeah. um, I like that play, but Good it's one of those things like you know. even when you're in like a small close range quarter fight, like if you're able to just like throw a grenade past somebody, they really, um, even the top players at some points have difficulty understanding where that exactly is going to lie and land. Well, you know, it's always all about the Holy Trinity in Halo, you know, melees, your gun, as well as your grenades and how you take advantage of those. As for right now though, 
As the action continues, it seems like Na'Vi, they're in a position to be able to make a flag pull happen. Some shots are coming from behind here. Kimbo's aware, but he should have the support on the right side of the map. You see a few of those uh, red, I guess, exclamation marks shooting at the members of the guard. Bohm is going to be down as well. Flag is going to be moving across the map inside of the Na'Vi base. And number two for the European squad. That was surprising because, yeah, I saw Na'Vi have some slays, but I didn't think they had enough slays to move that across the map. Uh, what this tells me is they kind of scrapped that one together, and I did see three members temporarily down for Na'Vi. So although they got that flag capture, they gave up some map control in exchange for that. So we're going to have to see if the guard can actually use their positions on the map here now to ideally get a few kills. Uh, but it feels like they're consistent in defense. Yeah, they're struggling on this Yeah, one. there was a trade in kills back and forth, but Na'Vi still somehow back in the base of the guard. The guard just having some trouble establishing where they want to be on this map. Yeah, it feels like the defense is, uh, you know, non-existent here for the guard. Uh, which is ironic given their name. So I'm actually quite surprised that they are <laughs> struggling to be able to defend their base. But, you know, I think that this is also just a testament to how Na'Vi are, are really uh, forcing the guard to play the way that they want to play, which is something that we alluded to, right, on recharge. And it did not work out because they just started flying at them. This time around, Na'Vi feels like they're using that against the guard here. And as a result of it, it's reflected on the scoreboard. Camo is going to be down. I think it was pop, but it don't matter because the flag's going to be moving mid here, Walsh. Yeah, and this has been working for Navi thus far. However, I hope they end up being a little more cautious here in the near future because the one thing that's going great for them right now is they're ahead in slays. They're keeping map control, and I don't want to see Navi potentially throw that away just to get a bigger lead. They're up by two caps right now. There's no need for them to have to force a ton of action. Get the kills. Make the smart objective plays when the opportunities present themselves, but do not desperate this flag across the map. Do not just give control back to the guard for no reason. Well, it feels like that's exactly what happened because now Boan manages to pick up the camouflage and let's see what he could do with this. The flag gets returned. He's looking for some information. Finds Jimbo right below him. Two shots in. He does manage to get the melee. He gets the kill. He's got to stay alive, but Respectful was prepared for him. That should maybe open up the door because Respectful died immediately after that, but two Foxy man picks up a critical kill in his base. Yeah, I think that kill from uh, Respectful to close out the uh, killing Bomax at his flag, it was kind of the nail in the coffin there for that flag run. Anytime you can kill the person that's closest to the objective, especially on a map like Aquarius, where the objective is very difficult to reach. Yes, it's very open from the top center. Like you can get angles on shooting across the flag like you see Pals doing right now. Yeah. But to actually get to where Pals is at in a spot where you can pull the flag is very difficult. It takes a lot of time to get to that position. So um, prioritizing that kill and getting Bomax, uh, like I said, ended up putting a stop to that flag for quite a bit. All right, well, Pyle's trying to make a play there to bring the flag out, take it over uh, to, the, uh, to their flag so that this way, Maybe they'll get scrappy, you know, down low. They have to return this. Respectful, up on top. They're so close to doing so. Right there, but Eli now with the full flank also managed to pick up those dynamos, and there goes the flag return. But they only have three minutes, 50 seconds. They have plenty of time, but, you know, with the way that the game has been going and the struggle that the guard have had to be able to get into the Navi base and make these flag pulls happen, it's certainly been a, a real, real test for them here. And a big kill by Jimbo, not allowing Eli to get comfortable in his base. And one thing I do like, though, we're seeing this from Navi now, as I was uh, concerned about before, was saying, do not force too many flag grabs or flag caps here. Uh, get the slays. If they can trade in slays and trade time, that's exactly what Navi would like. They'd love to see this clock tick down as they have this 2-0 lead. They'd love to see this, you know, go from 317 to 130 or whatever it happens to be. They just want to take their time, buy time, and trade, trade kills. Let's see now what Brainstorm's going to do after another successful camo grab for the card. Shows you that they're prioritizing the power items, which is the micro objective that you want to do here. Great help as well coming out of Boam to back up his teammate. They're not going to start this push onto the flight. You got three players that are going to be perched up in the back. Scratch that two. One should be on the downstairs. You have another one that's going to be relatively weak, Ooh. but no, oh, a big win there for two Foxy. And it feels like he kind of just caught Brainstorm looking. Yeah. 
got that perfect melee there. And that's exactly what he needs to kind of stop that flag run. And there it is. Navi playing great defense once again, getting slays, but also simultaneously at the same time, you have Respectful all the way across the map and tossing that out, making sure that guard cannot be on the offensive consistently. Yeah, and they're gonna have to push this room that has Jimbo in there with a heat wave, the flag right in front of him as well. He's gonna Do be not covered force by this. this. There are two members down for Navi and Jimbo wisely stops. He turns around, gets some slays. Now that he's got a kill, he has an option to put a little more pressure on. You yeah. know that the members of the of guard don't have full control across the map. So sometimes when you kill that pivotal player who's close enough to the flag that's trying to flank that flag, you kind of realize, well, they probably don't have another angle. I can move this a little bit further. And a huge trade there for Brainstorm, but the flag is going to continue onward. Piles, though, looking to play Overlook, backing his squad mate up. He's getting shot from behind. Just look at this pressure that that's being applied so by Navi. Great by Navi, just doing these bait and switches. Uh, we saw Piles, not sure what to pull this one together. It's been a strong series for the guard thus far, but this is the Navi that we had come to expect. This is the Navi that we thought we were going to see. The good news for them is, right, Aquarius has been very good to them. They're able to control this map effectively and not allow the guard to feel comfortable at all. And that's really what I'm picking up here, Walshy, is that it feels like the guard are, they, like, they just don't feel like they, they understand, like, what's really happening to them and how Navi are are suffocating them and not allowing them to have any kind of space in this Yeah, game. yeah, the two main factors I would say going for Navi, one is obviously outslaying them, getting more kills, it's just a lot easier and you have a lot more options across the map. That helps. Um, secondly, the part that uh, Navi are doing well, really well is doing these random flag pulls and guard aren't really coordinated to know where they should be or what they should be doing during those times. They're not sure, well, do we go back and play defense yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. we continue pushing up? And it's really getting them separated throughout the situation. So even though sometimes I was being a little critical of Navi saying that they can't force too many flag grabs, some of those flag poles or flag grabs was what was forcing the guard to go into bad positions. Well, Navi can breathe a sigh of relief because they managed to fend off the sweep and be sent home. They take game three, Aquarius CTF in spectacular fashion, control the entire time. The guard felt like they were not quite too sure how they wanted to execute on that. And this is where we see what the guard is made of because a lesser player would be frazzled coming out of that game. And now into oddball recharge, which is, you know, you're gonna have your setups, you're gonna you're gonna have your speed, you're gonna have that aggression, and you're going back to recharge too. Maybe this is where the guard begin to uh you're gonna be like, hey, you know what? Whatever happened on Aquarius, forget it, man. <laughs> yeah. And I mean we we did see the guard were looking really strong on recharge. However, oddball, complete different game mode, and we did see how well Navi played during these, like I said, those difficult scenarios where it's a couple Even players on left. Yeah, they did grand strongholds as well, but I would I would compare Oddball also a bit more to how they played this scrappy flag game. Navi were able to scrap up some time. So I feel like if we're gonna see an oddball game where Navi can play a scrappy style where they're grabbing yeah. 10 seconds or so, trading slays. I feel like that's gonna go in favor of Navi. If we're seeing like a full setup style game, I think something like that favors the guard. We've seen when they get when they've got like full control over on uh, on live fire strongholds, they were doing such a strong job there. So um, that's just kind of like my my overall vague view of how this could play out. But yeah. I would love to see this go to a game five. We're looking at these highlights once again here on Aquarius CTF and like I said, going in the favor of Navi. But the guard, you know, they seem calm and collected. They realize when you're at this level of play here in Halo Infinite and at HCS Raleigh. It's inevitable, you're gonna drop games. You cannot yeah. just get your hopes up and say, we have to 3-0 everything. Uh, they, they realize that there's gonna be games dropped from time to time. Yeah. You just have to bounce back from that, and that's just the reality of it, and that's what's, what practice is for. Sometimes, you know, you wanna go through a tournament, right? Especially for uh, some of these pro teams, you wanna go through an entire tournament and not drop in a single map, right? That, that's like the dream. It's like, oh, we were perfect the whole time, you know? I've uh, had a couple dreams in my days. Yeah, you've done that a few times. But uh, it, it, in, in this situation, okay, and a subtle flex, I, I, I peeped that. And it was the smirk, too, that killed me. That's the thing. <laughs> or, 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 or I could uh, throw a sponsor shout out say, and say, uh, I've had dreams that weren't just dreams. <laughs> You're too much. Well, guys, now we're going to be going into map four. 
Oddball, the guard, want to close this out. Navi have to make a reverse sweep happen here to stave off elimination. Navi certainly capable of doing it, but if we've learned anything from the guard today is that they stand toe to toe on that stage with Titans. And they're going to try their best to end it right here, right now, and eliminate one of Europe's finest squads here in HCS Raleigh. We're starting things off with Jimbo, but a good start here and a camo pickup for Brainstorm is certainly going to be good for them, even though, because what it is, right, is like, yeah, you know, he lost, he, he died, he had camo, he died, but you kept it away from the enemy team. And that is the most important thing at the end of the day. Yeah, it, it is important to keep out their hands, but, you know, Halo is a game of greed. You want to press every little band oh, you get, course, see if you course. can roll that into something more. So um, it was, you know, more credit to Nabi for making sure that they shut that down and make sure that that doesn't snowball any further. Yeah, there goes that soft play ball that was sent down to the uh, pit areas there. You know, you can't really throw it off of the map, but you tend it bottom mid, and Piles had nowhere to go. Yeah, nowhere to go, but this is also one of those more scrappy times I was talking about, and you noticed how, uh, you know, Piles able to grab a few seconds, but during those scrappy, scrappy times, I'm gonna have to say, from what I saw from Navi during that Aquarius CTF, I feel like they're gonna be a bit better during those scrappy times. So like right there, look at Kimbo, getting a little scrappy time, but not dying, respectful, taking advantage of this, pushing in towards bottom eight elevators. And they're able to try to translate this into a couple kills. I like that they're prioritizing keeping that sword alive. A big shout out to Eli for backing up his teammate there. Unfortunately for him, he didn't uh, quite, he wasn't quite able to stay alive long enough to see a better day. Brainstorm though is prioritizing the sword. And that's the reason why, right? That whole play led into a killing spree for Brainstorm who's having one hell of a series right now. Uh, and now they continue to hold on to that sword. So even if you go for that ball, you're gonna be met with a sword right to the stomach and no one wants that. Oh, look at the help. Boom, wonderfully done. And those are a couple of the kills that you need to see. Now it's really a question of, all right, Got a couple kills on the board. Are we comfortable enough to pull this ball out? Are we, can they put in any, in any good position? But they really oh. can't. It looks like they opt with, to just try to go for slays. Now that they see that play over a glass. And Kimpo getting away with his camel. We're going to see if he actually can run away. And this is going to be the first camel we've seen this map in a safe spot. Also with a sword, oh. but it gets pinged by that grenade. Oh. These players are so smart, they realize that one of the most common maneuvers after grabbing that camo Triple. is people jumping up towards that whirlpool and they just preemptively throw a grenade and light oh. that camo up. And that's gonna be an unofficial overkill. Put that metal back up if you can, 343. Three. I'm giving it to him. <laughs> well, there you have it for Piles. We wanted him to be, you know, really just come online here. And that's exactly what he needed to do. Game three was a, a bit of a wash for him. He was he had a very slow start. But a nice, you know, as Walsh says, unofficial uh, overkill here. Uh, and, and look at the way that he's running around this, right? He's constantly getting vision. He's letting him know, hey, long haul's clear. We can start to make this move happen if we need to. And he gets Whoa. away from that as well. Look at the assistance that comes through. No matter what happens, Piles played that as well as he can, and that was very well done. Yeah, and that's the reason why you're seeing a 24-point lead here for the guard. Just that spree of events, allowing his team to give it with that ball. And you know, an overkill in itself is amazing, but consider the fact that to help start the overkill, part of that was killing a camo sword player. Yeah. Think of a, how big of a swing that would have been. That would have been insane. He had camo sword at batteries. Like, uh, uh, everything could have gone right for them, but that one pesky grenade. Hey, but you know what, though? Jimbo's trying to, at the very least, bring this one back as all four members of the guard are down, and now we're going to start to see Navi add some points here to the scoreboard. Yeah, two Foxy deciding to set up over here at the gen deciding if he wants to jump this off or do a full setup. One thing that's a good benefit of having that spot is, yes, you can do a play ball if you need. However, I, I like the fact that Two Foxy isn't already in the play ball position. Instead, is in a spot where he can rotate if he needs to. Looks like he was going to try to rotate it towards long, but was taken out. So somehow this setup falling apart there. Three members of Na'Vi taken out. Oh. Eli Lee in the guard oh. trying to do this setup over at A, but Back and forth, trading of slaves as soon as three members of Navi go down, now two or three members of the guard go down, and this is kind of the, the effect you see sometimes in Halo of these swings. I really, though, I have to say, that play from Navi to send the ball to the Whirlpool area, right? 
and, and leave it out in the open, you, there's no way to like really predict where you're going to be spawning at, but you can kind of get a general idea after playing the game for such for you know as much as these players are, even with it being out for not that long. That whole play led to them getting that ball, bringing it over to yellow, and they knew that they were going to get those long spawns. Now they have the ball, and they continue to add on time, and they have a substantial lead that they can continue to build off of here. Let's see if the guard can break this. I like this play. Navi realizes they don't have pipes just yet, so he's just going to rotate away from there. Now that Jimbo's over in there, if Jimbo acquires a kill or two, they could rotate the pipes, but now they realize that there are threats over in pipe. Rotate the ball away. Do not go towards fights. Yeah, don't come this way. Stay away. Stay away. But of course, so given that Navi and the rest of the crew here have ball in the elevator side of the map, they oh. continue to add on to their score here. 71-35. Ball has just been picked up. Two Foxy with a crispy double kill. Might even get himself another one here in batteries. Piles playing a little game of ring around the rosy, but unfortunately it's a deadly game as he dies there and the ball's played in the pit. Yeah, great play there by Kimbo and just staying alive here towards A. Like we said, this A slash elevator area is such a difficult position to push into, especially over from control. Yeah. You either have that top narrow hallway where you can get shot in the catwalk, or you have the bottom narrow hallway. There's really no great avenue. You're getting shot either I way. I mean, you could try to rotate towards Whirlpool, but like that sort of flank is just way too long. It takes multiple angles or multiple persons to try to push over and take over A. So such a good job for Kimbo, like I said, to get that play ball and then also to stay alive over an A. So ever since the last big camo swing play that we saw with the sword and camo, we haven't really seen camo play that much of a role here, at least on our screens. And Brainstorm is trying to change the narrative for that one as he continues to patrol around mid, getting a heap load of kills and a ton of information. Also, a great play by Brainstorm to realize when does he need to play sneaky and be like a flanking camo player, or when does he just need to treat it like a oh. full-on setup? And you notice when he's at bomb control and he has teammates shooting people over batteries, he's not hesitating to just shoot across the map and reel himself. He doesn't always have to play like a sneaky player when you have camo. Sometimes oh. you just need to pull up the VR and shoot. Yeah, but you know what? In that instance, I would have liked him to, brought in, to bring a knife to the gunfight because he probably <laughs> would have gotten the kill there. Had he stayed, would he stayed alive a little bit longer? That remains to be seen. But Boam now looking to make some moves here and get in front of two Foxy. Surely one of those nades are going to connect, and that's a nice little killjoy there for Boam to kind of end that one there for two Foxy. Yeah, great job. And you notice Boam just staying alive over here towards the top eight. Try and just get some plays. I actually do not like this move here from Boam to push closer to that ball. I like that original position towards top A because they they were even in numbers and down in numbers. At some point, you just need that angle. They gotta person. get the ball. You need someone up high. They gotta get the ball. They gotta fly to the ball. There's no time left on the clock, and that is gonna be Navi walking away with round one due to time. And based on based on Jimbo, I'm guessing that something's going on right now because I see him pointing at this on his screen. I can't tell if he's saying, dude, check out my stats. I was slaying this last game. Or I can't tell if he's saying something was a little off. But, you know, I'm pretty good <laughs> I'm at reading body language. And uh, I'm pretty sure he wasn't talking about stats there. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident on that one too, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, you know what? It, it So far, I mean, so good for them. By the way, your eyes do not deceive you. That says two, like 1-1 one, one on the bottom. But Navi won the first round. That's a little bit of a spectator glitch which I'm sure will be resolved eventually but uh, ooh, I like that little play there with the uh, with with the grapple shot haven't really seen a lot of that today here uh, but very well done by Brainstorm who's been really effective with the camouflage yeah doing a great oh! job but, oh my god does not get that second full burst to get that melee out like there jinx him. the two shot melee but yeah great maneuvering all around but I think that's one of the things that's so easy to take for granted here as we're up here on this on uh, on the desk as we're like, oh yeah, that person did not perfectly execute all six of those bullets and get that melee while, you know, enacting that maneuver, jumping across. It's like, you know, we take the execution in the shot part so for granted. Um, and because you know, these players are just so, so good. I mean, everyone else will be able to test. You, you try going back to get shots like this, it's not that easy. Yeah, it's going to be three down for Navi, courtesy of Piles. A big start for him here. Yeah, sure, Eli, not really picking up any kills at the moment here, but that's okay because when you have Piles fragging like that, surely Eli is going to be able to come right back into this here, protecting on top yellow. You know where the pressure is going to be coming from, and that's why the rotation is going to be happening over toward that long haul. He's also going to be using this commando here, which is an automatic weapon, but a solid repulsor from Kimbo is going to force him away, and he still manages to stay oh alive. Oh my God! Big kills there for Eli. You love to see it.
Taking out the duo Kimbo and Jimbo there from Navi with those perfect shots. Also, the fact that he just jumped in that spot to, you know, to make his head Ooh. hidden to avoid that headshot yeah. from those stairs. It's just like all that. Because you have the upper so hand perfect. there. Right, yes. because they're gonna have to shoot at the gooch in that situation, <laughs> and you got a clean shot at their head. I'm sorry to get so vulgar, but that's just the honest to God truth. <laughs> and hey, we went one Halo broadcast. We almost went a whole time without me saying it. Yeah, I mean, it's we're impressive. gonna have to, you know, clear off that whiteboard in the back, huh? like. Days I'm, I'm being told by production, I'm fired. Okay, never mind. So that's that. Well, at least I got the belt. <laughs> Oh man, but what a what a swing though. I mean, even with that incredible play, right? Navi still very much in this as they have that ball over on the yellow side of the map and no one in a position for the guard right now to stop this. So they're going to scrap up a lot of time. And also you're you're seeing some desperation there even from like Eli. Eli just throwing a grenade all the way towards Bat Ledge, which is the ledge you just saw two Foxy stand at just a moment ago. Um Throwing grenades there, just hoping to like hit somebody or hit that ball carrier. And sometimes that can be, like I said, an act of desperation to use your resource like your grenade to not only one, Ooh. get away in position, but two, to not have that option later for yeah. when you have a player stuck behind a pillar or stuck behind a corner. Bit of a difficult start here for Boam. Ended up losing that fight. I'm sure he'd want to bring that one back. In. Kimbo. Well done with the shock rifle, big win for him. Eli went in there challenge because they want to try and take yellow so that they can make this push effectively into the whirlpool area. Instead, they're gonna have to try from tower, but they know that they're gonna keep running into a sword. So there's just a lot of utility or a lot of, of options in the sandbox there, I should say, that Navi are using to their advantage and excellent positioning as well. A lot of time that Navi have been able to gather here because of that. Yeah, and this, during the scrappy time, I like, oh, great play ball there. Uh, uses his life for it, so we'll have to see if that pays off. If like someone like Respectful or another Navi member, can get some eyes on the bomb center where that ball is. Ooh. However, um, yeah, they did not want to get a full setup over there at A, so I do not blame trading that position or that life for that play ball. And if round one, you know, is anything to go by, right? Like, uh, Navi are perfectly fine to just let time be the main villain of the guard here. Uh, camo loss as well uh, for Navi. Jimbo's gonna bring this, or sorry, for the guard, and Jimbo's gonna bring this ball all they the way over to Hydro, there, and he didn't get the play, so, but it's all the way out in, in a really bad spot. Yeah, but we do have Two Foxy already in a front position here, so I like what Two Foxy oh, is doing. Right Two Foxy's worrying more about his back for a moment, but now decides to overextend, pushing over towards Whirlpool and gives away his life, and he had sword, and he had the position. That's a difficult uh, decision to make. Yeah, and you can see that because of that play, Na'Vi, they immediately flew to that ball as soon as they came up. So the guard have never really had an opportunity to get that ball and get comfortable, but the call's been made. We're gonna take this ball, we're gonna bring it over to Hydro, and we're gonna hold it here and try and scoop up as much time as possible because, as I said before, time was their biggest villain in round one. They cannot allow that to happen again. Yep, Eli just baiting this long haul for a moment, trying to find him. Hey, we're slipping by, and two Foxy just sniffs it out. Instantly just flying yeah. across the map. That's one of the problems is, if you're not watching the center of the map and you're just holding corners, Navi are not hesitant to just fly across the center. Yep. They're going to take that slight advantage. They're going to say, all right, well, if you're not going to punish us for going across the center of the map, we're going to go across the center of the map. Yeah, and you have to make that assumption, too, that you are going to get flanked there because that little secret spot is a very, very strong position to be in. And also a not-so-secret spot. Yeah, not-so-secret. Like, so it's a spot that Everyone's people check pretty quick. They're just like, all right, didn't see you long haul. Yeah. There's someone around the corner here over at the grenades. <laughs> it's like the worst-kept secret in all of us. Uh, I mean, yeah, I feel like I'm doing, like, hide-and-seek with, like, my future kid or something like that. <laughs> uh, what? I don't <laughs> see your feet under those curtains. Peekaboo. <laughs> well, though, let's see how the guard are going to try and respond out of this because they have managed to obtain the ball, but two players are going to be down for them. Uh, Eli and Piles as two Foxy looks to push in here. He's going to miss that jump, and that means he's going to run right into Boam. But Boam is weak, and oh, that was a good attempt, but not enough. Two Foxy able to win and get the better of him in that play. One minute left on the clock. You got a slight three-point lead for the guard here. 69 to 68, or 67, excuse me. But now the guard bring that ball around toward Long Hall. Respectful. He's going to fall there. Two Foxy sees the 
exactly where oh. he is. And that was actually a really smart play. Like Unfortunately, it. he didn't Tried get the timing. Tried to repulse that grenade away. He was already in motion with a jump there, so could not help it. Now, I'd love to see, does he pull like a lucid ass play, like try to repulse off the wall and get back to glass? Or instead punch them for not having grenades ready to go right at that moment. Five time for oh. Respecto, flank through long haul, but it's just not enough. That's two members down for Navi as this ball fight is going down yeah. in long haul. But Dave, look at what happened because two Foxy was pulling so much attention. You ended up having two players for the guard. Actually, everyone got wiped out in the hall. The last two players for the guard were one shot. So they were able, as a result of two Foxy hiding in a freaking corner, able to grab the ball and bring it over to their side. This could very well be going to a game five here if it keeps going like this. And Navi, they're feeling it. Yeah, the guard, they're panicking. They realize they have to get over to this ball ASAP. They start to take some shortcuts. They've been getting a little punished for it for going down the bomb center. And now they're in a really difficult spot trying to push through that pipe room. Well, their team has grenades. Flank. It's difficult. And just as soon as they make it through as well, they're just going to play the ball. Respectful drops it in towards bottom center of the pit. Yeah, and gives the guard no opportunity to comfortably grab that ball and get out of there. Time is going to be the villain again here for the guard. We could be going to a game five to open up championship Sunday. The ball hasn't been grabbed. And yes, indeed, Navi managed to win 2-0. And they are digging deep. And we are going to a game five. That is so huge for Navi. Getting that slow start, but bringing it back slowly but surely. And this is such a terrifying position to be in for the guard. Anytime you go up 2-0 in a series, you're just like, all yeah. right, we got this. We're, we're playing our game. Yeah. We're doing everything right. But you start to you start to lose that. You lose that momentum. You get towards game five, and you start to question yourself, say, all right, well, clearly what we're doing is not working. Yeah. I need to switch things up. And sometimes when you have too many players changing up too many things, it's really tough to get that right equation for your team to have that success. So I'm interested to see how the guard play this last one here. They won the second game, Slayer, but clearly Navi have been taking charge and control of these last couple games. They got a little bit ahead of themselves there. Aquarius CTF could have been there undoing a 3-0 there, a 2-0 for Oddball. Such a strong start here for the guard, but Navi showing why they are the squad that they are, why they have had so much success not just in, in, in European Halo, but in the world stage in competitive Halo for such a long time. There are four veterans on that stage that have been through this song and dance before. They know how it plays out, and they're just hoping that they can keep this thing going for them, keep it going here in Raleigh. They don't want to be sent home yet, but what a game that was. It felt like the guard had plenty of opportunities, but Na'Vi managed to capitalize on every little bit they, they uh, uh, yanked away from the guard. Yeah, they did such a fantastic job, never really letting the guard get a extended full setup. They never let them really get that setup in towards A or towards Hydro and, yeah. you know, scrap up 30 or 40 unanswered points. It was always a fight for that ball. So great job by Navi to, to match and slay because frankly, that was the biggest problem in game number one. Strongholds was coming across and you saw someone like Bow Max going positive 12 or positive 15. Yeah. This play, by the way, one of my favorite plays of the tournament. Staying alive, Eli, and then he, of course, uses that vantage point, of course, to oh, cross pop there. I saw, like, literally no health. Yeah. I, I saw maybe, like, a pixel of red there that was for it. Eli, but that was Beautifully it. There done. was, they had no over I mean, any sort of uh, shot would have killed there on the head or any other body part that Golden Boy could have potentially named. Yeah, well, you know, I said Gooch. Sorry, guys. I you know? didn't want it to be said again. I, was I own it. To... I know what I am. Folks, Raleigh, how you feeling today? We got a game five. It's not bad. Good way to start off Champ Sunday here. You know, I was looking at some of the games happening at, at, at uh, the, our Bravo stream. Of course, if you're watching at home, you can catch all the action across Twitch and YouTube. We have multiple streams going on. Our Bravo stream, uh, I believe, was being held down by, of course, the one and only Shy Wei and Tony. We have another match that's going on as well over on the Delta Station. Status quo, Team War. Team War up two to one over Quo. But, folks, this is it. Do or die for Na'Vi, for the guard as well. This is it. I mean, Na'Vi, they cannot, you know, they came into this tournament with so much hope, Dave, and to lose to the guard would have really crushed them. But for the guard, this is a big opportunity for them to really cement themselves here in competitive Halo. Yeah, I mean, the guard has had quite a trek 
throughout this event. You know, we saw Na'Vi making their statements in pool play, showing that they can hang with some of the best teams. The guard had to go through open. They've had to make it all the way here and prove that they're one of the best across the 256 teams that went in open bracket. What a journey that they've had. But really, every team here has had so many challenges throughout the competition. And now we're taking it to the streets, and the streets is fast, it's furious, you know. And no, I'm not trying to quote Vin Diesel, but I'm just trying to keep it real with y'all. This place can go, it, it could basically go in a, in, a, in a heartbeat if you're not careful. What are you doing for us, man? We're here to promote Matrix to Resurrections, and you're talking oh, about yeah. these other franchises? Get it uh, together. Blue pill or red pill? Red pill. There you go. That's the right answer. <laughs> okay. Our promotion part is done. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, look at this. Navi, they managed to get themselves a rocket launcher here. Kimbo's going to put this one to good use. Oh, but he's going to get picked off, and that's unfortunate for him. You know, that rocket is deceiving. Sometimes you get a shot right on the, the, the feet of someone, and they somehow manage to stay alive. Or you can shoot a railing, and they'll die on the other side in arcade. Lord knows how that works. But, you know, hey, man, uh, it is what it is, right? And this gun as well, the Bulldog has seen a lot of work. And that is mostly because Two Foxy and players like him have put it to good use. Also, huge plays by Two Foxy like said going to Killing Spree 5-1 to kick it off for his team in game number five. Keep in mind, Two Foxy in game number four had a slow start. I want to say it was about two minutes in where Two Foxy, uh, until Two Foxy got his first kill. So yeah. I love that he's able to turn up here on Slayer and during game five when his team needs him the most. Well, this one's going to be a quick one if it keeps going oh like this. God. Beautifully done by Respectful. Let's jump into the comms here for Na'Vi with an Astro listening. Watch out, Little Prepple. Ah. Oh, no, it's a that's that window, that window. Yeah, that's okay. 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 He's got yeah, a tie jump, tie jump. He's got okay. rockets yeah, now. No, he went past our mid. He went our mid. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch Wait, wait, wait for them to make the first mistake. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna anchor on spawn, okay? I got you cross. I got you tight. I'm gonna, yeah, just watch my cross. I'm gonna go back and anchor. Cafe I'm weak, cafe weak. Right? I'm not uh, with you guys. You know, you need cafe weak. Uh, two, two nades from cafe, boys. Ace, we try this as well. I got you, 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 I got Rockets, Rockets are up at 10, last time they played Stalker. Vic, let me know, Vic, let me know. Hey, hey, hey. Yo, do I have driveway? So, yo, just come play driveway. Come He's play nice, top nice. No, 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 don't push driveway. Just play for the Rockets. He's top nice, top nice, top nice. He's top nice, top nice. So play for the Rockets, Eli. Play for the Rockets. Rockets are up. Top nice, top nice, top nice, top nice, guys. Two shots at them. Let me driveway, Tristan. I left, bro, fuck. Are we at Rockets at least? I have Rockets, I have Rockets. I got one, I got one, I got one. Yo, B, watch me, watch me. Watch out, guys. I traded, I traded. Nice. Only dead by five. Hey, I'm going PC. I'm watching I'm in PC. Red room, I'm in red room. Stay alive as long as you can. Stay alive as long as you can. Has rockets I spawn C. I spawn C. So you just heard the listen-in with Na'Vi, and then I had actually asked uh, if we could transfer over to the guard because I wanted to see how their comms were, and I have to say, I was extremely impressed by them. The small talk, the way that they're keeping this game together, they know that they're up against insurmountable odds, and they're doing a good job holding it. Yeah, my two biggest takeaways from those, uh, those listen-ins, first, from the Na'Vi side, is they had a significant lead, they had a 10-kill lead, and they said, let them make the mistakes. Navi does not need to push forward, force amazing plays, and close this game out. 
They just need to not make mistakes and yeah. get trades and get whatever they can. So that was a great call out from Navi and getting that right mindset. The second thing that I noticed from the guard during the guard listening was they made an adjustment as they went for those next rockets. They said last time they played Stalker. So they were looking towards that top C balcony to get that pick or get that damage before going in for those rockets. And they were able to acquire those rockets and close that gap a bit. And now that we look at that GB, it is now only a four kill game here between Guard and Navi, both these teams, tournament lives at stake. I mean, you can tell both of these squads want it here, but who wants it more as a double kill comes through for Respectful. And this, you know, I think that they did a brilliant job playing around their power weapons. Good help there as well. Piles with a big win, but Respectful comes in hot and gets himself a kill. That, of course, is going to be another big swing there for Respectful, just to continue to add on to this lead. Seven kills is the difference between these two squads. Yeah, Respectful and Navi squad slow down. looking pretty good here. It looks like they're just trying to force some action here. Last time, we went to the listening. They were trying to slow it down. They said this time, they said, whatever, let's just push towards Let's try to close this out. There's one bottom A. They gotta close it out indeed. The rockets are now available and Navi have obtained them. Keeping the drive alive here for Nadis Vincere. We'll see if this is going to be the undoing of the guard. It was a valiant effort indeed. You only got a few oh. kills remaining. A big rocket's gonna land, making that the 48th kill. The 49th kill has been registered. Only one more. Could it be coming from this rocket here? And I think Two Foxy sees the target. He's gonna do it. Hook, line, and sinker. Two Foxy closing it out for Navi. The reverse sweep. And what a game that was. Credit to the guard for coming out of the gates hot. But of course, Navi, oh boy, do not count them out. EU Halo is here to play, and EU Halo is here to stay. What a huge win there to bring Master. that back from a 0-2. Having your back against the wall is never a comfortable position in the elimination bracket, and Navi is showing that they have so much experience in these Halo events that they yeah. can bring it back, even against a squad like the Guard. If there's one thing, though, that we picked up from the Guard, is that this is not going to be the last time we see those four players on that main stage. So much talent, a lot to be proud of here. The gauntlet that they went through in the open bracket to get to this point. They earned it, they deserved it, but for this day, it belongs to Na'Vi.